Morning all. England had to play a very strong Georgian team yesterday. Georgia with four GMs. And uh, an interesting game on board three. Nigel Short playing black against GM Levan Pansule, Pansule 2575. Nigel Short is 2698, just below 2700 at the moment. Let's have a look at this game. Knight f3, a non committal first move from white, the ratty opening. c5, and after c4, we have a transposition into the English opening. Knight c6, knight c3, looks fairly symmetrical at the moment. Black plays now g6, and white reacts with an intention to quickly play d4, which is <clears throat> a very common idea here and often very effective. So e3, foregoing perhaps Fincetto and the bishop now that the light squares have been weakened like this, white doesn't want to also play g3 usually. So knight f6 and now an immediate d4. Nigel takes, after e takes he plays d5, staking his claim to the centre. White plays a forceful continuation now with c takes d5 and now after bishop c4, okay, if Nigel plays e6, there might be a move like bishop g5. So, he plays actually knight takes c3, and instead of a routine capture from white, recapture, white injects queen b3, hitting f7 quite menacingly. The knight actually goes back to lure the bishop to d5 here. After e6 now, gaining a tempo, it looks as though if the bishop moves back here, then there might in fact potentially be knight takes d4. Let's have a quick look at this position. So d4 is slightly vulnerable here with the queen on b3. It seems from an engine point of view, bishop c6 is needed, giving up the light square bishop. Bishop e4 is not that pleasant. Maybe bishop b4 check. And the king might be even be forced to move. If bishop d2, it doesn't look pleasant after bishop takes d2. Knight takes d4. Looks as though black might be getting better a better opening there. After bishop c4, okay, again, Maybe stronger than knight d4 here. Maybe knight d4 doesn't even work here. Let's have a quick look. Bishop e3 and white's got some strong pressure, perhaps, for the pawn in this position. A bit too dangerous. But bishop b4 check is much more annoying. Okay. So white maybe wisely took on c6 here in the light of of stuff like that. B takes c6. So the bishop pair in exchange for a nice late pawn on the semi open c file. After castles, queen d5 offering to heal up the structure if the queens come off. Of course white doesn't really want to do that in principle. He plays queen c3 keeping a lock down on that c pawn. And starting to put pressure on that c5 square. Will black want to liberate later with c5? What about this bishop? How will it get into the game? It'll be nice for a bishop being liberated across this diagonal if c5 is played later. For the moment, a very interesting move indeed. Uh, Non-stereotypical here in this position. Nigel plays f6. So some questions need to be answered here. Why not say bishop g7? Uh, or bishop d6. Let's have a quick check here. Maybe the c pawn is too vulnerable after bishop g7 for the speed of white's play. Bishop f4. Already white's threatening rook c1. So say castles, rook c1. It might be okay, actually. This position, from an engine point of view, it seems okay anyway. It's giving up that pawn potentially. Because uh, there's always a backfire in this position. There's a backfire with rook b7, uh, bishop b7 for bishop f3. So that's interesting to consider, um, giving up the pawn in various variations. So maybe 
This move looks interesting anyway. F6 looks slightly weakening, but if White hasn't got the light square bishop, uh, this diagonal is not going to be as dangerous. And in fact, in the game continuation, now Black even plays another pawn here after Bishop F4. He plays G5, a bit provocative for Nigel maybe. Bishop G3, Bishop E7. But how can White, without the light square bishop, exploit this position? And isn't this providing solidity, solidity to Black? You know, Bishop D7. The King can maybe just connect the rooks like this. Celebrate connection of the rooks there. Hello, hello. <laughs> Rook F E1, King F7. It seems difficult to to exploit anything Black's done here, even though it looks like a lot of pawn moves. Okay, we have the, the C pawn to attack though, and now that's defended with Bishop B7. More ambitious, in fact, than Bishop D7, because it gives the idea that maybe C5 is going to be used as a pawn sack later to open the bishop on that diagonal. Now White plays Rook E3. And now we see Rook H E8 preparing maybe to defend that e6 if white's going to double. So this rook e3, as though white would double. Queen b3, hitting the bishop. And here, interestingly, the bishop is protected with a pawn sack. It seems like a pawn sack. Anyway, um, I think checking this earlier for, with an engine, d takes c5 is indeed possible. There's no, no major tactical flaw in d takes c5. Okay, so protecting the bishop like that, opening up the bishop on the diagonal, it seems black stretching out comfortably. White plays actually queen c2 here. And now Nigel offers the exchange of queens with queen f5. But this exchange of queens would mean that f4 is immediately threatened. That looks unpleasant. As well as ideas of bishop f3 at some point, and maybe cd being threatened. So for the moment, here, white takes on c5 allowing black to exchange queens, and which he does, a pawn down, surprisingly, you might consider. But um, he's got pressure here. Rook e c8, how does white defend? c5. Well, the natural move is this, which is played, and now bishop e4, harassing the rooks. Rook c1. And now, unless white wants to remain with structural damage for the rest of the game, and potentially a locked out bishop, after bishop takes f3, White takes with the rook. If he plays g takes, then e5 and goodbye to the bishop. How can they ever get back in the game? That would be in effect playing a piece up here. That wouldn't be very pleasant. So White took with the rook and allowing black to maintain material quality. And it looks as though, okay, could this be a draw now? It seems quite simplified. Well, these apparent earlier weakening moves are actually space gaining moves as well in the skies. Black can increase gaining in space later with f5, f4 from this position. Let's see. Rook c3, bishop d4, nice central bishop as well. No pawns adjacent to be able to chase it away. And this bishop still looks a little bit passive. Check. King g6. b3, protecting the pawn. And now f5, as though the bishop's going to be squashed. And it doesn't really want to go to h2. That doesn't look too good. It'll be locked out of the game. So it goes to d6 while it can. And we see rook d8. And it looks look a bit shaky for the white's first rank for a moment. Bishop e7 attacking the rook immediately. Rook d5. Okay. So what's going on here? This bishop, very beautiful piece. Protecting, attacking, protecting squares beautiful piece and potentially what is black up to here is there an idea of rook e5 well in this position white plays king f1 now the bishops kicking the rook and then we see further squashing on on the king side squeezing gaining space with g4 and an intention is revealed that maybe f4 and h2 will be more vulnerable. The king's just le leaving h2 behind here. Okay. And if the king ever goes back in that scenario, it would be pretty disastrous for g3 and a pin on f2. So this is slightly awkward now for this pawn and this pawn. White is under pressure. He plays b4, 
maybe giving the idea that he's got a two to one pawn majority. Why not try and use it? But Black's playing f4 now and immediately threatening things like rook h5 and g3 if the king ever returns. So already white has an incredibly uncomfortable looking position. What do engines think of this? Surely black's better here. Black's only a tiny bit better from an engine point of view, funny enough. Tiny bit better. Okay, turn off the beasts. King e2, rook h5. And it seems to be maybe white's gone wrong a bit in this continuation already. He's losing a pawn now. He plays h4, and so black is now a pawn up. So already, was that a major disaster actually from what the engine considered? That looks quite shocking com compared to the evaluation that we just saw after f4. So pardon me, let's go back here. King e2, that is giving black perhaps a, an advantage here after rook h5. And it definitely in this continuation, it looks as though black's a clear pawn up. The evaluation has shot up significantly. So how should white have played this? If he had played a4, let's go with rook h5 again. What's the difference? a5, bishop c5, targeting a7. This causes some problems. Taking looks very, very dangerous and better for white. In fact, white might have got the better here. Maybe he's just misplayed on the queen side in this position, not to have played the natural move um, a4 so this king e2 looks as though now um, there's some problems can white play for a4 here the problem is that maybe you know these two lead to the rook if we go for a4 now just offering h2 and bishop c5 it's a, it's a different picture now with rook g2 and now g3 on the cards G3 still on the cards because of a pin here, so you know maybe one move makes all the difference in the, in these types of positions. Uh, so if we go back, it seems White is really um, by playing King E2. This pawn sack looks looks very suspect. It seems as though White's not given time now to do much with his two to one pawn majority. He plays F3 and King F5 is played now. A4 finally. But um, okay, here e5 now, and it looks as though this is quite dangerous. This e4, rook c6, e4 is played, and the king's really getting aggressive now. King takes e4, check, and <clears throat> there's some game uh, misprints here. Black's got a very powerful move, which um, seems. And Nigel Short has confirmed this was his final move on chess games com apparently. Uh, so black to play, it's a really crushing move in this very simplified position. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you ten seconds starting from now. Okay. Simplified but still potentially lethal this position. There's a loose piece on, on the position here. Black plays I believe King D five. Attacks the rook, offers the pawn, but there's gonna be a nasty check winning the loose piece. What does White do here? Does he sack the exchange? That's the only thing to do, but it still seems hopeless to sack the exchange with rook C five check. So let's have a quick look. White resigns here. It's hopeless, isn't it? The rook takes f4 check, winning the bishop. Uh, this this looks hopeless, rook c5. So a simplified position, it just shows how, you know, somehow in this position here, crucially, let's go back to this position before doing a quick review of the game. It seems engines think white wasn't doing too badly here. Play a4 and if we have say rook h5 then white might even be better with a5 
and bishop c5 hitting a7 and and d uh the d4 bishop here this kind of scenario looks looks very dangerous what does black do here white's uh white's doing very well was that really forced what are the alternatives after a4 okay i think rook h5 is becomes a totally inappropriate move here actually to be fair if black retains the advantage of f3 then that's the way to go f3 threatens actually in this scenario rook d1 which actually maybe is why in fact the king uh, wanted to come out here to stop f3 this is threatening a mate it becomes clearer now that a4 of course it must have been considered the natural tendency to, to try and exploit the two to one pawn majority but f3 here is dangerous that's the danger move it seems so threatening immediately to mate so if takes takes king e1 it gets a bit scary though check but maybe this this is about equal looks about equal or, or trying to be better for black okay so certainly not better for white let's, let's not twist things too much white although missing um, a4 there was a good intention behind king e2 to stop this f3 resource from trying to weave a mating net with rook d1 um, but it okay in this position it makes a lot more sense now uh, Nigel's continuation rook h5 here to get the advantage to grab that pawn there's enough time for this let's review the game from the start then so white playing for that quick d4 and then we have this forcing sequence where okay white's giving up the bishop pair but black has that pawn which would looks a bit vulnerable on c6 but are these actual exploitable weaknesses or just bad looking things visually weak but without being exploitable weaknesses so are they in fact that weak c5 liberating the position quite a lot so even an exchange of queens with black's bishop pair and the option to play bishop f3 here to try and lock out this bishop gaining his pawn back and okay so this scenario is basically you know black's got the majority of pawns over here white's going to try and use his pawn majority but this bishop's a bit of a tactical target in the short short term having to move here to avoid getting squashed and this rook d5 provides a lot of flexible ideas as as shown in the game uh so getting these pawns down is also you know squashing the king potentially threatening rook d1 if the pawn comes to f3 so b4 very good intention a4 a5 bishop c5 if only given enough time that would be very dangerous because this a pawn uh, is the only thing in the way of these two past pawns here potentially so f4 king e2 though sensing f3 is really dangerous here and wanting to avoid that so but um it might have been best uh to go for this anyway uh to take here and king e1 maybe white's best so he didn't do that he um he played king e2 and rook h5 is now actually more effective in this position so he loses a pawn and this tactical vulnerability is exposed here in this in this variation with this line being opened now for the rook for rook e3 to be a powerful resource final move king d5 a crushing blow attacking the rook and threatening rook e3 hope you enjoyed it so with this win actually this was a key win which england needed yesterday to defeat the georgia team two and a half one and a half so nigel short is the top scorer so far for England. Congratulations, Nigel. Well done. <laughs> Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.